Hello everyone, this is Don Self. Today we're gonna to have a mini webinar about the autonomic nervous system. Well, exactly what is the autonomic nervous system? Well, first off, everyone has an autonomic nervous system and it controls and coordinates every organ and every organ system that you have in your body. Everybody does. Now the autonomic nervous system has three different parts, the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system, which is dealing with millions of neurons in the gastrointestinal tract. But for the sake of today's discussion, we're gonna be limiting it strictly to the sympathetics and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, as you can see on the unit from the operation game, and yes, that is just disturbing, Never mind. bad example. We're not gonna do that example. The sympathetic nervous system. Remember, you have three, the, the sympathetics and the parasympathetics. The sympathetics is what many consider the fight or flight response side of your autonomic nervous system. Uh, it controls everything from the stomach to the bowel, the lungs, eyes, blood vessels, muscles, etc. And the parasympathetics also controls the eyes, but it does it from a different perspective in the brain and the lungs and the stomach, etc. Well, that's kind of more information than you probably wanted to know. So let's keep it simple. The autonomic nervous system is considered to be like a seesaw. The sympathetics and the parasympathetics, they balance each other out. The sympathetics is like your gas pedal with the parasympathetics is like your brake pedal. And as you know from driving a car, if you drive with your accelerator and you have no brakes, you're destined to crash. But the sympathetic side also controls the stress response, the adrenal side, and Again, the protection of survival, the fight or flight side, where the parasympathetic side is more the vagus nerve and digestion and rest and relaxation. And what we're trying to do is maintain, even if we're misspelled maintain, we're trying to maintain homeostasis in the autonomic nervous system. Homeostasis is also called balance. And if we have these two balanced, then we're having normal functions, uh, achieving normal functions, such as the eating and the standing and the walking and sleeping, et cetera. You can see those things. Everything from bowel function, sexual function, temperature control, breathing, skin, skin sensations, and more. That's when everything is in balance. Unfortunately, sometimes we have different diseases or conditions that's affecting our body, such as Parkinson's or dehydration. That's going to help throw the balance out. Diabetic autonomic neuropathy, cardiac autonomic neuropathy, postural orthostatic, orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, congestive heart failure. These are just some of the different factors that can cause an imbalance in the autonomic nervous system. And when the autonomic nervous system is affected or damaged, you're looking at autonomic dysfunction. And yes, there is an ICD-10 for autonomic dysfunction. And the results of that can be everything from incontinence to uh, having trouble getting started urinating, to constipation, to diarrhea, to chronic fatigue, uh, uh, sexual problems such as vaginal dryness, inability to orgasm, erectile dysfunction, uh, problems with the mood swings, uh, anxiety or depression. Uh, that's very, very common, by the way. Uh, exercise intolerance, inability to alter the heart rate. I'm going through uh, cardiac rehab as we speak. I'll be at rehab tomorrow. And while I'm exercising on the treadmill, they always come and take my blood pressure. And then they'll do so after. Well, an inability to alter the heart rate is a direct, function, a direct result of an autonomic dysfunction. Some patients have too, uh, too much sweating or no sweating at all. or They have insomnia. That could uh, be due to having a high parasympathetics. Uh, everything from orthostatic hypotension. That's where you get the feeling when you stand up quickly after sitting down for a while. Uh, that lightheaded feeling that back in the 70s took you a joint of marijuana to achieve. And today you get it because you're dehydrated. As you can see on the screen, the sympathetic side speeds up the heart. The parasympathetic side slows down the heart. The Sympathetic inhibits digestion, where the parasympathetic stimulates the digestion. Everything from relaxing the bladder to contracting the bladder, the, the bladder uh, is considered part of how the sympathetics and the parasympathetics all work together. For instance, let's say that you do a 
an ANS test on a patient and find that the patient has high sympathetics and low parasympathetics. Well, chances are this patient's probably having problems such as insomnia, anxiety, uh, hyperhidrosis, or premenopausal syndromes. On the other hand, though, if a patient is suffering from high parasympathetics, it could be that they're fatigued and depressed. They have no energy, lethargy, they're lethargic, uh, malaise, uh, sleepiness in the daytime. Uh, it could be, and a lot of times, the high parasympathetics is being caused by the cardiologist over beta blocking the patients. According to one study that was published in the American College of Cardiology, something like 31% of CHF patients are being over beta blocked. That's raising the parasympathetics uh, nervous system on the patient and causing these uh, life altering conditions with the patients. That's why they don't want to spend time uh, shopping or going to church or spending time with their grandchildren because they're just totally dependent parasympathetics has taken over. Now, what happens though when you have extremely high sympathetics and almost no parasympathetics? That means there's no parasympathetic protection of the patient's heart. That patient is at very high risk of myocardial infarction or a heart attack. Um, and that patient should be referred to a cardiologist for immediate consult the same day. I remember I was with one practice up in North Texas, just north of Dallas, about two hours north of Dallas. Well, really about an hour north of Dallas. Uh, years ago, and patient came back and showed extremely high sympathetics and no parasympathetic protection. I was able to convince the doctor to send the patient over to the cardiologist that day. The cardiologist wanted to wait to see the patient. Said, "No, I'll see him when I get back from vacation." The fa family physician, I stressed it, and the family physician had the patient go over that day to see the, the cardiologist. In fact, I drove the patient because we didn't want that patient driving. So I drove that patient to the cardiologist and left them there. Before I got back to the family physician's office, that patient had a heart attack sitting in the cardiologist's uh, reception area. Cardiologist was kind of freaking out. How did you know without having done a stress test? Well, there's simple tests that you can do, but it's that serious. This is life altering with some patients. Instead of treating the symptoms, and a lot of times we'll be treating the insomnia rather than treating the cause of the insomnia, or we'll treat the depression rather than what's causing the depression, which is an autonomic nervous system, my advice is address and treat the cause. This is what you would want if you were the patient. ANS testing today is easy, quick, painless, and very profitable if done properly, <laughs> extremely profitable. Uh, I sell about three to four of these ANS devices per month on average right now. And most of them are going to the primary care doctors, neurologists, cardiologists. And the typical monthly net profit, net profit per month is between eight and $17,000 for most primary care doctors that's seeing 25 patients a day because so many patients are presenting with these problems. Now, if you want additional information on this right here, you're welcome to give me an email, give us a call, uh, schedule a time, let me talk to you and go online and show you. Uh, on my website, you can even watch a video of how the testing is done. But give me a call, let me find out where you're at and let's pull up the Medicare allowed amounts as well as the Medicare LCDs to find out if you have any limitations of where you are. In some states, you might be limited to 50 or 60 diagnosis codes. In other states, you might not have any limitation like that other than medical necessity. So if you want more information, give me a call. And guess what? I kept this under nine minutes. Thank you so much.